What's up, guys? It's the saddest guy. Now, I apologize. I have noticed I have lost some subscribers for this. So, I do apologize for not really being consistent with these videos. So, instead, instead of doing more live tutorials, I'm going to do pre recorded tutorials. And those, they take a little more time to just do and really make sure I get it right. But, I, I, but it's a lot easier to kind of just put it up versus doing it like this, I think. And whatever questions or concerns, you can send me a, a message on PSN or on one of my videos. And then I just make another video about explaining more in depth into certain things if you didn't get it the first time around in one of my earlier tutorials. But yeah, so after today, I'm going to do more like already set up um, tutorials about stuff and how to improve your gaming and skills in Storm 4. So... Let's get to it. So for this video, for my last live tutorial on Storm 4, we're going to go over infinites. Different infinites, how to use them, why to use them, and how do you know when what's an infinite and what's not an infinite, that kind of thing. Um, let me go back. That's fine, that's fine. Let's go to the most basic looking one. And walk our way around the room with different ones. Um, yeah. waiting for it to load up everybody that knows how to do infinite does not know a proper way and knowing how to use an infinite because there are right ways to use it in wrong ways some people just try to abuse it just because they know how to do it but it's a lot more than one way to really use an infinite so the first and basic way to kind of recognize what's an infinite is if a character can do something like this and it takes them like a little spin to get back to you and you can stop in the middle of that combo like and you see how he's standing like back at his um main stance if they're back at their main stance and you can't jump or move out of the combo or something then that's not an infinite it has to be something specific actually so you know too i always put mine to know if it's an infinite or a stun or a stun infinite as you can call it I will put my um, the computer I'm going against. I put it on when damaged on when it comes to guard, so that way that'll happen. So if I do a combo and stop and it's not right, then they're a guard. Versus if I do it the correct way, then that's what happened. And so, sauce case. So most people jump when they use it. Some people use a pill and do it. A guard break. So I decided to do mine a little differently. What I would do with mine. I would jump or I'm sorry. I actually switch. That way, I don't know. I just can't help it because if I do with one character, it just looks cooler to me to switch, and then it boosts you up your um, team gauge faster. So I'm like, if I switch, I feel better, and it, it's like there's more things working for me. strange one with um, this one more type of infinite I gotta show you guys 
with Neji's most well with Neji's infinite out of everybody he's just the only one that's gonna work like this yeah so it's gonna be the down combo do one air palm once and then just keep doing it it's because of his hand motions and the way that his um combo works is what makes it an infinite because the amount of this the small space that he's given after he does his air palm is close enough for him to be able to hit as soon as he hits the ground because of the gap is so small from being right here he, it's like he's instantly right in your face like even though it's a gap like even though there's a small gap right here and and his arm length is not that long it's like he instantly just right at you so it's like he can just keep doing it and so when it comes to Madara, when he uses his, his a unique stun oh, lock. Man. So Madara has a unique type of stun lock for those who never use Madara or don't know nothing about, about him. Him, Ren, and I think maybe one other person have a stun infinite. And what I mean by a stun infinite... <laughs> What's up, man? So when it comes to Modder and for showing up. when it comes to Modder using his infinite, what a lot of people don't know is how to use it and the purpose for it. Fine. Because and do it, and then like they just leave it there. Ah oh, shoot. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another thing too. When you do an infinite, since there's more than one way to use it, you can sim simply abuse it. Collaborate. You can simply, okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, I got time tonight if you want to. Um, this is actually, I've been meaning to do that. Um, I got to add you to a PSN as soon as I get done with this tutorial, which is literally maybe five or six more minutes, and I got you. Promise. <laughs> with Modder, uh, with Modder's Infinite, it's like you can start out and go into something else. I know I didn't do that right. I'm just giving an example. So, I handle it. Okay. So when it comes to Modder's Infinite, because of how weird his is, his happens before the actual. Uh, let me show you first. So first, you do it. So right before he hits you in the air with the balls, and I can show you at that point. Right, right, as, right as he gets to that point when he lifts you up with the balls and then hits you down to the ground. Right before, matter of fact, the true secret orbs. I'm sorry, before he hits you to the ground with that, or actually picks you in the air, you stop right before it gets there. For me, it was really difficult to learn how to do it. So, the moment where I feel like his um, true secret orbs would shift, or I would hear it, I would stop and jump. And see, like, I watch like how they're about to move into the right spot, and I hear the little whoosh that they make before they actually come together and hit you and then I will stop the easiest way for me to stop is jump or okay. and that's how I would do it did not mean to tilt that time In the actual fight, I know how to do it. It's, just, it's funny when I try to teach this because this is so weird to me. But anyway, with Madras, it's, it's really a stun, so it's very particular. And when you do it, it's the same as doing it with Hase. Even though he's not twirling, he's standing perfectly still. It's all the same. But again, too, um, let's say my opponent has one sub. So this is, I'm getting more into depth with how to use it the right way. So my opponent has one sub, and I'm using Madara, I'm using Sasuke, or anybody with an infinite. The goal of it is to make them use that sub. So, so I'm gonna do a combo. I'm gonna stop it and just keep doing it till they sub. Because you see how much damage I'm taking? And I, I mean, this is all I'm doing. Like, and then if I make it worse, 
I would do an ultimate, like if they still, because every time you take a hit, no matter if it's a dash or any, any type of contact or anything that you do to your opponent, it's going to build their subs faster. So the idea is to make them use all of their subs as quickly as possible. Now, if they just take the full infinite back to back to back without subbing, then that's on them. But the more you pressure them to use that sub, the better it will be for you. Because the only thing that they will be able to rely on is just support or a counter. So that's one use of it. Or if you're kind of weary or cautious about when they use a sub or not. And let's say they have two subs or more. The goal is to keep pressing them to use them. Now if it's at the end of the game, matter of fact, um, let me make it easy to show you. Like it is. All right, so this is one of those times here. So with his life, with how it looks right now, let's say I need an ultimate to finish him. He has too many subs. So Jutsu Ultimate, he's probably going to substitute it to stay alive. So I won't even try to bother with that. So I'm going to be simple. And a lot of pros, well, I have to say a lot of pros do this. But if I'm really trying to play serious and really trying to win, this is a tactic I use. And so with this tactic, if they're this low in life, yeah, you can keep running with Ultimates. I mean, not Ultimates. You can keep running back with Infinites back to back to back. But well, eventually they're going to have to use this up. So this is where this kind of combination come into play. So, uh, so I will start off the same way still. I'm still doing the infinite. But then I'll guard break. And then with the guard break, I'll use my shortest combo that's gonna get me to the cutscene the fastest. Because once you end that cutscene, or like super close to that cutscene, it is so hard to get out of it before the cutscene actually appears and you're left unable to substitute and a lot of people aren't able to do that around that time especially when like in the first five or six hits you see he was still dazed before he actually got out of it and at the end of a fight you know like with a combo like that to start off with an infinite or an extended combo into a guard break and, and they're that low in life then most of the time you're going to end up killing them before they even get a chance to use that last up simply because you caught them off guard for one. They weren't able to protect themselves or do anything. And you know, they're wide, wide open to, to get most of the damage off of them before they get a chance to really use that sub and that's the end of the game. A lot of people don't think about using the infinite into a guard break, into a short combo that can get them where they want to get to or get them that win that they've been desperately, desperately. Now another use of it, it's so many ways infinite. Like I said, one way, I put everything back to normal. All right, and then with, with me, now of course, like I said, you can just sit here and use one person for me, I mean, for this. But I feel like if I switch, then you see it raises my, um, my storm gauge for one thing so I'm not dependent on just using a jutsu I can do a lot of other stuff without being so dependent on just using a jutsu to get me out of my situation like there are so many ways to use the support as a matter of fact especially when it comes to this Sasuke I can do this Oh, there it is. Then you know I did it. 
anyway, so I will do with infinite, especially with certain characters. He's really not one of the rest 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 of you. So when it comes to certain characters that have infinite, like Sasuke, I, you. The rest of the <laughs> I do this perfectly every time. It's random. I'll support you. I'll leave the rest of you. Not gonna give me this time, so I say. So when you're doing certain infinites with certain characters, and you know how to do those little tricks and switches and stuff, then you can do stuff like that. You can make them do a preset combo of three hits or two hits. Each character, each character has something. It might be it. It might be one hit. It might be two hits, but it's gonna be hits. And I mean, yeah, you can do this and get into it, and then go right into that and do it. But to keep you from wasting a guard break pill or speed pill or anything in particular, for certain characters with the infinite, you just wait in your moment and then you can just do it. And with stuff like this. You can do a lot of other stuff. And 5k has one of the easiest infinites that you can do. So to blend his in and do stuff like that helps. And so it, it can really help you go from an infinite to an ultimate or whatever you want to do. Or a guard break into something else. So keep that in mind. And that is actually it for infinites how to use them why you use them yeah they do a lot of damage they keep it easy on you and actually i show you something and again a lot of stuff i'm going over i'll do another video on it and a pre-recorded one so it was a lot easier to break it down but like i've said before too like if you just pick any character that doesn't have an infinite or something it makes it harder to get as much damage off in an ultimate or something as you would probably want, as a matter of fact. But, take that out too, that's getting annoying. Oh, oh no, that's what's up. Oh. Fine. Well, it's gonna do some damage, don't get me wrong. But it has nothing on it. Oh, nope. I wanna make sure this looks right. I'm not sure I even go even further. So even though it's doing some damage and it looks okay, you kind of pleased with it. Stand aside, stop that. I really gotta make sure I'm showing this stuff right. So you see where it is, it's about at the awakening level of chakra, the little red symbol. But I can go way further than that. And this is where you you don't need a character with an infinite, you don't need a ju ultimate jutsu, but it does help you make those really good comebacks. So example. Way more damage, and it doesn't take as much time. 
to get all this damage in. And I mean, I'm not even at the juice yet, and you see how much damage I did. So I was keeping mind that an infinite and two of ultimate does way more damage. Actually, I should probably do a video on that specifically about what does the least and most amount of damage with this. Because I didn't know when you guard break and you use it. Yeah, it's cheap and you do it. But, uh, it's not going to be a lot of damage at all. Oh, I forgot. compared to what I just showed you guys. So I always keep in mind, I mean, yeah, you can do it. I mean, it's cheap, but you, know, you play back you want. And even though it's cheap, it, if you kept your opponent off guard and kept him with it, it'll help. But just keep in mind, like, don't expect no clutch win doing that either. But that is the end of my video. Um, for those who do watch it, thank you for watching. And I will have more videos, more definitely more frequently. I do apologize for not being as consistent as I could be. And I do plan on changing that. <clears throat> Thanks, guys, for watching. Um, make sure you hit the like button if you have gained anything from this. And I'll catch you later.